Hello everyone. Tomorrow I want to look at tracking guitars, so I'm going to quad my guitar, so I'm going to use four separate recordings of the same riff. I'm going to pan one hard left, one hard right, then channel three and four, I'm going to put about 65, 75%. We'll look at both, look at how we can get a big stereo-wide image of the guitars. We're going to look at what plugins I use in Cubase to enhance them, and then perhaps also look at recording the bass guitar, how we can record bass, how we can use EQ, both surgically EQ'd for taking out unwanted frequencies out of the guitar sound, but also how we can EQ the bass and the guitar together to make them sit well together so they complement each other. But before we start looking at that tomorrow, I thought let's have a look at getting some audio inside Cubase, and we'll look at their version of Auto-Tune, or they call it Vary Audio, but it works very in a very similar fashion to Antares Auto-Tune, or there's Melodyne on the market, but all main DAWs now have some way of auto-tuning it, and Cubase is actually very good, it's a great bit, it's a great package. Um, the other thing is Free Warp, it's called Free Warp inside Cubase, and again, this is a way, say you play something and you're slightly behind the beat and you want to push it forward, or you want to change something in the audio, so a timing discrepancy. It's a real fantastic bit of kit. I don't, I'm not sure when it came out. It may have been about 8 to 8.5, Cubase 8.5, 8. But it's called Free Warp, and it's a way of moving your audio, manipulating your audio elastically. And it's a great, it's great. We'll have a look. So let's go and have a look what we got under F5 and the Media Bay. Um, so I've F5, I've got Media Bay up. I've got a vocal here. Let's just click on any have we got any? Oh, okay. As you can see there, I've got Cubase is on a one bar loop, so let's make it a four bar loop. So whatever you do in Media Bay will obviously sync in because I've got, if I do F5 again, do you remember that tool we looked at before where we align beats in project and everything? So every, it's Media Bay, Loop Browser, all of these things will talk to whatever you're doing inside the main screen of Cubase. So, actually though, that sounded alright. So... Oh, yeah, let's go for it. So, double click on him. And there he is in the project, like everything else we've done. We did beta line, so if I press G to minimise this down, you see here, it's aligning on my project, so I can now control D to duplicate it, and whatever I do, will be synced to my Cubase track, which is great. But this is probably a bit too long for the, what we want to look at, but should we cut it down? Yeah, let's cut it down. So let's just take the first two bars. So in all, the way I did that, I just right click, get the scissor tool, and then just cut the bit I don't want. So even though we haven't got any um, audio happening here, we've got enough to look at these two editing packages we're gonna look at. So I've highlighted that. I'm pressing P on the keyboard, and he's setting my locators now, so when I do a loop... Ooh, baby. Okay, it's just looping the two bars. First audio editor we'll look at, let's look at Free Warp. So, I'm going to double click on my um, audio line, my waveform, and then just maximise that out to be in Cubase. So, I'm not worried about all of this at the start, doesn't, doesn't matter at all. In Cubase... I'm depending on where, what what you went on last when you went into the editor, we've got all of these different things, but we are going to Audio Warp. One interesting thing, you can actually, um, you can put a swing on these, it's, it's really cool what you can do, and then you got, you'd, you can do it in fourths or eighths or... Ooh, baby. Ooh, baby. But you can actually swing it. Obviously, that's quite difficult to hear because it's such a sustained piece. But if you've got something quite rhythmic, it can be quite a cool little tool. But, sorry, I digress. Free Warp. I think I hope I called it Free Warp before. But this is the button we press. So it's under Audio Warp. Free Warp. And now when we click this on, can you see it actually divides the bar up much um, into much smaller increments? Because... When I'm dragging this audio, you, you obviously want to be see, you want to see where you're dragging to, and obviously I'm in four four, and it's got the we've got the increments there, so I can actually drag my audio now. So if I felt it was starting slightly behind the bar, I can actually drag it forwards. But not only that, but you see the way it's dragging, it's not doing much to this side of the information. Rather than stretching something out. Generally, it have big artifacts in this side, but you can actually 
click wherever you want to edit, and you can actually edit different sections by making these markers just by clicking. So it's a great way. You can change the attack of, a, of the start of the note, or you can actually, but I mainly use it for timing discrepancies. So if I if I had an issue with a timing of one of my parts, I just put a click in before, so I mark it, and if I want to bring it forward and backwards. But remember, it's, it's worth messing around with a bit, because you might find that if you do that, it could affect this bit of information until you make another marker to stop that happening. Can you see here? Now, because I made a marker here, I can drag this wherever I want, and it's not affecting the other bit of audio. So, likewise, if I pull this, but I may want to put a marker somewhere else, and then now you see it's only affecting this part of the audio waveform. But have a go with it. It's called Free Warp. It's great. It's really good for little timing um, discrepancies or moving a bit of audio around. It's really good. Now, you've also got Vary Audio where this is a really useful tool, very useful. N numerous things you can do with it. If I go to Pitch and Warp, you can see it calculates what's going on here. And let's, let me minimize that down a minute. And this is your actual waveform of the vocalist there, but it actually shows you on the piano roll the notes they play. Now, I can Control A to highlight that section. This is, you know, I cut the bit of information off I only made it a two bar loop. This it will show you the other information, but of course we're not dealing with that at the moment. Okay, so I press Control A to highlight it. This selects it. You can actually quantize the pitch. Now you see what it did there. It actually brought them directly onto the line. So you can quantize the pitch there to bring it onto the line, or you can actually click on each one and move them onto the note you want. So say if a singers come in and even can even I've done it on guitars before but say you've gone to they've gone to the wrong note or they're slightly off the note so if they're slightly off the note which can be great don't get me wrong you know it's, it's sometimes a great you know it sounds much more human and much more real if then not if everything's not on dead on the on pitch but sometimes you can get singing and it can be a bit pitchy so that quantized pitch can be quite a useful tool for that it would just bring things in you can actually straighten as well. Now, this is if you went wanted to go for that robotic sound, you can really straighten those. So let me just control a hit a minute. Let me just straighten those up, and you'll see what I mean. You'll get a very, very robotic. And also, you get a few artifacts with that as well. So let's bring that back. I, I try and keep my vocals as natural as possible if I can. So it can be quite a cool tool. Another thing you can do, you can actually change the pitch of the whole thing. But one other, really quickly before I go, segments. You can actually highlight segments, and you can actually, if you felt the vocalist sustain on one note too long or a guitar line and you wanted to see what it would sound like in um, more of a step fashion, you can actually choose the bit you want. So if I went to bar two, with segment on, once you hover over the waveform itself, a pair of scissors appears. And it's just a simple case of clicking on that form, going back to pitch and warp, so the scissors aren't on anymore, highlighting the bit of audio you want to move, and simply order, um, simply drag it then wherever you want it to go. So, you can even go into much, so if I go to segments again, I may even want this, well, let's say halfway through there, Pitch and warp again. Remember to go back to pitch and warp each time. Oh, sorry, I've got them both highlighted. So click off it, click on one. Let's go back up. So. Ooh, baby. And that's a way of, so if you've got audio, you want to do a bit of manipulation on it. They're both two really good tools. Good luck.